talk show. And I'm trying to help you keep it on the air. We all know how important it is to keep our sponsors and affiliates happy, but in my humble opinion, there is only one person who really matters in this whole darn crazy business. And that is you, our viewer. Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me as always is Aaron. Hello there. This week, we're discussing the horror new classic, Late Night with the Devil, starring, and I'm sure I'm going to butcher his name, David Dalmastian. Sure. Sure. 101 Dalmatians. I'm not sure. Something These along those lines. from the Isle of Dalmatia. Absolutely. Dalmatia. So each week on the podcast, though, Wouldn't Die, we discuss guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the horror and sci-fi genre with a comedic twist. Aaron, how are you doing today? Dude, I got off work. Friday was my last day of work. I went and had a Mai Tai at three in the afternoon. And I have been watching movies for the last two and a half days. That's where the best. I just am walking around in a moo moo. I did finally clean the kitchen and do a load of laundry. But otherwise, Turner Classic movies are on a loop. I am deep diving Peter Lorre. So I watched M, uh, a, a Weimar Republic classic. I that watched classic. Crime and Punishment. I watched The Mask of Demetrius or something. I've been deep diving Peter Lorre. I was thinking about this. 25 years ago, when I was in college, a good day for me. Like this, I look forward to these days. I have nothing going on. So I'd hit the blockbuster video and rent like three movies. Usually it was some kind of, it was a movie from the eighties that I'd heard of, but never seen, you know, or maybe even the seventies. It's like, Oh, I've never seen Serpico. I'm going to grab that, you know, three movies. I'd order a pizza, maybe a two liter bottle, a pop, and then just lock myself away in my dungeon and just have a marathon. That's the best. That's the a, best. basically I have 10,000 things recorded on my DVR that some of them been in there five, six years where yep. I said, where I have to lock, never delete, never delete. So I'm finally going there. I mean, some of them are silent films, which means you got to sit down. Yes. You know, watch pay attention. M, yeah. M is like a silent film because it's in German. So I have to read everything. Yep. So, uh, I'm, I'm trying to hit some of these. I got some Buster Keaton waiting for me. I got, because Buster I Keaton is Come actually on. quite amusing. I remember taking cinema appreciation in college and it was the first time I'd ever seen like Charlie Chaplin. It was the gold rush. And I'm like, this is pretty goddamn funny. I'm not doing that. That's a bridge too far for me. <laughs> no, thanks. No, because for me, and maybe it's different for you, I there's something about like a cozy nostalgia of movies that maybe I'm less familiar with from the 70s and 80s. If you're, we're getting back to the 20s and 30s, there's no cozy nostalgia for me. So who's no, to there's say? There's no cozy nostalgia, but I really like like the, the World War II and older like detective mm -hmm. noir absolutely and like uh the during the war post-war international intrigue people on trains spies things like that mm -hmm. i i really like old old movies now saying that i did finally watch foxy brown which has also been on my my part of the weekend freak mm -hmm. out watch movies till your eyes bleed Pam it's Greer. just deep diving turner classic movies that's what's been going on you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Give us your 30-second synopsis of Late Night with the Devil. Dick Cavett has a late night show where he invites Linda Blair as the exorcist on as a guest. Hijinks ensues. <laughs> Period, exclamation point. Yes. Interesting. So what we're supposed to believe is he's kind of, he's a late night, he's like a Johnny Carson type. Right? I think maybe he's like one of these guys that are like after Carson or something. I'm not no, th sure. They said that he was up against him in the ratings. Like but, was, he, but he's like a local dude, right? He's like I don't think local so. Chicago? I don't think so. I think he's supposed to be like... 
Like up against, like he was, they were one and two I mean, in the ratings. The name, oh, I see. I thought you meant in their area. He was, he was getting better numbers. I thought he was like a local yokel, like, like the best of Chicago. And in Chicago, he was starting to beat. You're saying that this was a national. This is a, my under. Maybe I'm wrong, but my understanding is he's a national dude. And I'm trying to think. Who were the other national late night hosts in the seventies? I mean, who's the guy who was on really late? Uh, he well, there was Tom it. Snyder who was the on. Tom Snyder. Quite frankly, before all, you know, Letterman and all these people all wanted to go up against uh, Johnny. Was there anyone? I mean, I don't know anyone before all that happened. I mean, it was it was Johnny. It was Johnny Carson. I mean, there must there must have been. If I was up that late, <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, because you got to remember, Johnny Carson was not the first host of the Tonight Show. Yeah, but how old do you think I am? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So it's it was it was Johnny Carson in the eighties. Then you got the David Letterman's of the world to kind of compete. But I don't think maybe I'm wrong. David came after. See, it went. It went. Um, Johnny David Carson was on an after after the Tonight Show, same channel. The, they were not directly against each they other. They were never. Yeah, he never went up against Johnny Carson. It so was, it depended on what time you got back from your party, uh, whether you were still watching Carson or if right. you wanted to watch David Letterman. And they were different shows. Yes, David Letterman was weird and wacky and yes. really more for the college crowd and the young folks. Hundred percent. Not that Carson wasn't funny. I still enjoyed Carson. But it but was your, a different show with different guests. Your parents would watch Johnny Carson. Whereas... I mean, I would watch it because he could be funny. I mean, the best part was always the beginning with his monologue and his banter and all that. But this is a thousand. I mean, when did Johnny, was it 89 that he finally retired? So it's it's been a while. This yeah. is neither here nor there. This guy is that. But when I think of 70s talk shows... We're thinking, like we said, your Dick Cavett's, your Mike Douglas's. Those were like afternoons. Or those were afternoons. Your Dinah Shores, your Merv Griffins. I don't think of the nighttime pro programming. Right. But again, like, I was four. It's like no one bothered, you know? In my right. mind, there wasn't anything else. There'd be a late movie, maybe the right. news. Because why would you put anything up? You're wasting money to go up against Carson. That's what it is. Straight up. Now, you you and our other sister, Tara, were first talking about this. I had heard of it vaguely, but you guys seem to have more of a of knowledge about it than I did. What, what... Uh, not really. I saw the poster and I was like, what the hell is this? Because mm. the poster looked like shit. But then I saw it got like huge ratings and then our sister watched it. So it got a little, it got me a little buzzy. So uh, I'm glad we watched it because I love some '70s nostalgia. It's funny. I think I told you this. I because I I was on X or something, and I saw a snippet of uh you know scene from this movie, and it was so fulchish and violent. I was just like, God, what kind? Of, what is this movie? So I wasn't I wasn't rushing out to see it until. Um, you guys started talking about it and then you came to visit and we watched it together. But I was, I was hesitant. I thought it was going to be mean, a Eli I Roth. I try not to know what it's about. I want right. to be surprised, but you're right. I didn't want to see a freak show. So when I, when I realized what the main premise is, then I was like, okay, I'm down for this. Right. 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 And what's interesting. Another thing is that we were watching it and my kids were walking in promptly announcing that this movie was canceled, which I didn't realize. I'm like, whoa, what happened? What did I miss? I know. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, was he the producer on this movie? I mean, what happened? I mean, things are canceled all the time. Somebody, we were on another podcast and someone told me one of the podcasters I used to listen to for years were canceled. I'm like, well, why were they canceled? Well, they're not really friends. They don't really get along. That, that's why they're canceled. <laughs> and sometimes at their live shows, they don't vet the people who come up on stage to tell the story. And, and that's why they're canceled? I mean, are they... <laughs> do they do their thing at the CPAC? I mean, yeah. is this... the? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm but, like it. It seems that seems so trivial, like this cancellation. It, it's important that 
everybody's angry at AI, and justly so. Yes. So the reason this movie was canceled is because the cards that they would use when the the TV show would have to go off the we'll air. We'll be right or, back. Right. Well, the be well, right technical dil, dif, uh, I don't know what those cards are called, but right. They were created using AI. Right. Th- therefore, the movie's canceled. Yes. Right. And it's uh, the idea is that you want to pay a person, a creative person, to design these little interstitials rather than. You want to hire AI, a graphic nothing. designer yes. to do the graphic design. Correct. And I agree with that. I, I agree with Does it. Does that I mean you're canceled? Right. Because, I mean, no one was raped. Uh, let's be clear. We don't know. Let's just say uh, that. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I cannot comment one way or the other. But you're right. It's it's like, look, we all support our artists, right? You're an artist, for goodness Correct. sake. So we support our artists. This was not the script was written by AI or the film was directed by AI or the actors are AI or 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 this or that or anything else. This is something that was on screen for less than 10 seconds combined. If I, if I had to guess. So, you know, you do you, if you feel you want to cancel some stuff, you know, fire away. But I was, I was not offended. Now I'm almost 50. So maybe my, my (laughs) tolerance for what I should be offended by is a little is a little different than some. So, such is life. Agreed. Though I mean, to me, it's like CGI. You know, that's all fucking AI too. But 100%. no one's crying about that. I mean, these used to be practical effects. There was a dude who mm-hmm. was sculpting it out of clay and painting the background. So, mm-hmm. absolutely. I don't know. Why don't we jump right into the highlights, Aaron? Do you got anything? Do you have even your notes in front of you? I I wrote four notes, and I can't remember what they are, but they were just general descriptions. I just want to say that this had, especially at the beginning, a very legitimate vibe. Mm -hmm. It totally reminded me, because I'm old enough to remember, like, after after school, the, the, the talk shows, the late night talk shows, where it would be Halloween, so you would have a psychic on, mm-hmm. you would have a magician on. There are a lot of characters on this that were uh, got to be based on real people. Like they had um, the the psychic and magician debunker. Was it Harry Blackstone? What, what was it? It was name? something like that. I don't know but, if it was Harry Blackstone, but no, yes. No, but but I can't remember. The Amazing Randy. The amazing Randy would come on and he would be the debunker. So they had him on. So it had like a real vibe. The costuming was right. Mm. The colors were right. Everything was like kind of like that tomato orange, that yellow, the browns. I mean, it looked really true. Yeah. And the way they talked really seemed true. The sideburns. Oh, I mean... I was digging the vibe and, you know, you saw some funky things going on, but, but you weren't really sure what's going on. They gave you like, it was a mockumentary. So they gave you the yes. backstory of behind the scenes, the behind the scenes, the death of his poor wife who he loved. And there was some mysterious connection with, you know, him and the young Republicans in, was it the Grove? Where they right. go out for those man chanting things, you know, men. <laughs> it's what we do up to these yeah. hijinks. <laughs> right. Let me let me very very briefly kind of give you an idea. So it is a late night talk show, and they kind of like we said in kind of documentary fashion, where it's like you know, presumably this was the final episode of the Blah Blaze Blah show, uh, unless and, right. Well, but I think that in retrospect, it became the the final right. episode. It but was sweeps week too. It was sweeps because in the mid seventies he was like fighting with with uh, uh, Johnny Carson. But by now the late seventies, their ratings are taking a dive. The last couple of years have gone down, down, and they seem to be on the brink of cancellation. So on sweeps week, uh, they are doing all sorts of kind of uh, sensational stuff. Like Aaron said, you got the. Uh, the psychic, the psychic debunker, and yeah. you've got the possessed girl and her 
psych her her, her psychiatrist. I mean, her... girl raised in a sex cult. Yes. Uh, who has uh, either demonic spirits or uh, multiple personality, all which was super hot in the 70s, one way or another. Either you have multiple personalities or you got a devil or you got both. Maybe your multiple per personalities possessed by the devil. All good stuff in the 70s. All, it's good stuff now, frankly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just science. Just science. Well, now, in this, and I have to say, this is kind of reminiscent when I, in the eighties, I remember you might watch Phil Donahue or Geraldo or even Oprah. And in the, in the eighties, you might have, I was in a, a demonic sex cult when I was a child. Let's talk about your experiences, right? They would and have. That's definitely the eighties and, yes. and things morphed because everything before that was like, the Tonight Show, but in the afternoon. You have a comic on, you'd have a singer on, and you would have an actor on. Celebrities, right. It was celebrities and people would interview. It's the same layout. It's a desk, it's three chairs. And viewership started dropping off. So you had these larger audience and audience engagement. I mean, Phil Donahue and, and Oprah and all these shows mm -hmm. were not at the beginning what they became correct it correct. wasn't like paternity tests and fist fights that was right but that, it became that yeah by the 90s you had richard bay and jerry springer where and i but i think it was a hey, a, a, a kickoff the kickoff of geraldo geraldo's really the one who was like oh, by the Geraldo, late 80s that was good shit with with the nazi, nazis, nazis busted a chair on his face and broke yes. his nose Absolutely. He'd have he'd have the Black Panther Party and the neo Nazi on the same show together. And then when just I was be in like college. I had uh, some of the guys in the fraternity were working at the local TV station. So I made me I made them bring me like eight by ten glossies of Geraldo. And I made I, I used it for an art project. <laughs> so but that so jumping from that to Jerry Spring and Richard Bay, where it was now just freaks. We're not having there's no celebrities. There's no, you know, Joni Mitchell's out pushing her new yeah. album. None Who's of that. Who's the father of my daddy? My yes. boyfriend, my father, or my uncle? <laughs> oh, it's none of them because I'm a dirty whore. Because <laughs> I'm a dirty A thousand percent. A thousand percent. That This is neither here nor there. Okay. Well, we can also talk about it, how in the 90s, uh, everybody got a talk show for five minutes or so. You had yeah. Pat Sajak had a talk show. Chevy Chase had a talk show. Carney Wilson from Wilson Phillips. Ricky Lake. The list Ricky goes on Lake. about people love Ricky Lake. Absolutely. They all so, have their moment. They all had their five fucking <laughs> seconds. And, and they're fame. still doing the same old shit. Except now it's like shoved to morning TV. Yes. When no one's home. We're no, I don't know who they're talking We all have to, to work, right? What is yeah. it? We're we're talking about this has totally gone off the rails now, but it's like how there used to be a lot of soap operas. There was like yeah. 30 soap operas on oh, during yeah. the day. And then all the ratings dived because guess what? Everybody's got to work. Nobody's sitting at home wondering what floor polish they should use. Floor wax. Now our aunt and cousins still record. They record. The Young and the Restless. Well, now there's there's three left. There's General Hospital, Young and the Restless, and what? Days of Our Lives. Those are the only ones left. Like Sands through the Hourglass. I have not watched a soap opera, an American soap opera. <laughs> an American soap years. opera. <laughs> I do watch British soap opera regularly. Absolutely. But they no don't question. run cosmetics company or oil plantations. They're all just like poor people vaguely involved in crime. That's true. East Enders. That's what East they do Enders. on the East End of London. That's Anywho. Right. Oh. <laughs> by the way, by the way, uh, in England, you can be a bald sex symbol. Okay. And, in, and in Germany, too. Absolutely. Everyone like, looks, in Berlin, everyone looks like Moby. They do. Well, it, it, <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. It's like I watched one episode of East Enders. It's like, here's here's the. the Why were the, you watching my soap opera? Because when I, you? I was your. I rented a room for years. Oh, I walked yeah, in there. That's right. Here's, here's the romantic lead, bald. And his rakish brother, bald. It's like, really? 
Is everybody bald? That's how they that do was it. Grant and Phil. Phil's yeah. still on it. That's he's what like I'm the saying. Victor Newman of, of the British soap opera. And this, this is before Vin still, Diesel. He's been married six times since then. <laughs> this is before Jason Statham. Although maybe, I mean, hey, that he knew. He knew where the wind was blowing. He's from England. Anywho. Bald, about 250, about 5'6". What could be wrong? What could be wrong? 250 <laughs> of, of rippling muscles, by the way. I don't think so. Well, maybe not the guys not on East Enders. muscles all, all in his belly. <laughs> anyway, Late Night <laughs> with the Devil. So this movie kind of takes a takes a turn because you wonder, you, you figure there's going to be some demonic shit going down. But it seems like shit's going wrong before they bring out the possessed girl. Like the, the, yeah. the, the fake psychic, we think he's fake, right? But then he starts, what is it, throwing up like tar and drops dead? It was a Sam Raimi experience. It, 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 yeah, it was like black tar. I don't know what you ate, dude, but that ain't good. I love, so he's doing his thing while the kind of debunkers there and the guy's like Wah! like throwing up like projectile like texas tea black gold all over the and he's like that's that's standard bs anybody could do fake projectile vomit it's like bro he was to i just googled he's totally the amazing randy he even looks like the amazing randy the psychic goes out and he's just blowing it left and right with the audience until all of a sudden he's like struck by lightning in his head and yes. he's getting signals about the the host followed by extreme rockety vomity that was that was a, a funny moment a, where he's out there trying randy's to randy's always so angry yes. and the fake amazing randy is just as angry oh no question but when when the guy's up there kind of i'm getting vibrations and he's like anybody with the, and the guys goes uh my cousin's name is is molly or something it was something totally ridiculous and i was like yes that's it that's what i'm talking that yeah. whole opening part was very amusing but well, what happens? He like goes and goes to the one couple, like it's the mom and her daughter. Oh yes, you know my my mother. Or somebody just died recently, and it's very emotional. But then it's revealed they had like answered interview questions while they were waiting in line to come Someone in. Someone was in and, line with them, asking right. them questions. It's the usual busily basel. Total busily basel. So the I told you I saw the the Long Island medium when she came to town. It was the most depressing show I ever saw in my life. The whole front row is women, is families who have lost young children. Oh God! You want to kill yourself by the time you're done. Hundred percent. Well, and, and we've talked about this before. I don't have an issue with some of this stuff. It all depends what we're talking about. If you go in and talk to a medium or a palm reader or whatever the hell you pay your fee for your entertainment cool you know whatever whatever they say who cares that's fine now it's if you need to tithe where every month they're coming back and cutting me a check for a grand then then that's a problem there's a curse and there's more messages right. literally somebody stopped me in vegas and like was i'm only going to be here one night if you want to come back to my room there's a, an important message there's a woman standing by here i'm like i'm sure it's my grandma that because i'm winning at craps she's like what up i'm like that's great news she's like but if you want to i'm like no thank you <laughs> so, you've said enough thank you very much thank you very much on thank your you way very half much. barefoot white trash lady get away from me get thee behind me grandma uh, get her right <laughs> <laughs> um but I, and i especially liked how when it cranks up and they bring out the possessed girl it takes a it takes a dark turn right there's well, kind it's of simmering it's, it's simmering there's a simmer with the the fake psychic medium whatever he was at the beginning um but there were moments of kind of like well that's kind of funny um but when they bring out the psychic then it, it starts taking a turn because there's a point where he says uh, the the, fa the 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 debunker. He's like, there, you know, it's all fake. There is some, you know, uh, hypnosis that clearly people can do. And let me demonstrate the right. hypnosis. Then it goes right off the rails. It goes crazy because the meanwhile, Doc Severinsen is yes. already Ed McMahon the, the, and Ed McMahon are getting the the willies. 
And they're like, nah, brother, this thing is getting weird. And everybody's like, shut up. This is the best TV ever. This reminds me of, uh, what was that fake talk show? The Larry Sanders show. Larry where Sanders. like, shut up, it'll be fine. <laughs> it is. Well, it's like Jaws, right? Where there's warnings and people don't always listen to the warnings. And of course, then the exactly. shit goes down. Um, but yeah, so he, <laughs> the, he does some kind of thing where he hypnotizes not just the dude, but the audience as well, the home and the audience, audience at the home. crowd. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's hypnotized. And the guy talks about his fear of worms. Oh, yeah. Like I mean, Roxanne. We're never get hypnotized. We're, if we're going to go there, uh, uh, my fear is getting raped by monsters. Is he going to just throw that out at me? Why? Would, okay. I wouldn't even suggest that. I wouldn't even go. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> No. I don't want worms crawling out of my stomach right. either. Because I'm afraid of worms, Roxanne. Worms. Uh, and then it's like, hey, I noticed you you cut yourself shaving there. What do you mean? And you see like the worms coming out of oh, it. It's a full poltergeist Blah. experience. And next you know, you're like peeling your face off. It was. Well, he opens his shirt. And, oh, they're inside. Worms dump it out. And then it, you think that's bad. Then it's. Ah, and his eyeball pops out and a giant worm crawls out. That is ah. that is the scene that they that I saw on uh, Twitter. Just that moment. And I was like, whoa, what is this movie? I don't think I want to watch it. Now, the whole rest of the movie, there's no violence or gore really at all. It's so just, to go, yeah, it's just the hypnosis. But when I go to Vegas tomorrow, I'm not fucking volunteering <laughs> for any hypnosis show. Are they no, going to do that, though? I feel like I would be very susceptible, and God knows what's going to end up on the social media. It's meant to be fun, so I can't imagine it's going to be like there's a giant worm crawling out of your eye socket now. Everybody. It's Vegas. It all can be, it's all fun and games until it's not. Anything could happen. Anything, Anything could happen. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, they say, it's unless only. it's a giant worm. Unless it follows. <laughs> Unless it follows. <laughs> what did they say in uh, 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 The Hangover? They're like, hey, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, except for herpes. That'll fall. Yeah. <laughs> That'll come back with you. Uh, it's except true. Except for gonorrhea. <laughs> well, exactly. 100%. So then it's, it's revealed, you know, oh, I, you know, none of that happened. I just used my hypnosis skills. Therefore, anything you see, because they went back and literally played back the video and they said, look, see, no worms, no worms, nothing happened. It was all hypnosis. So the question then it's like, but what happened with the, the possessed girl where it was like she was floating and all this shit were they were contemplating running the, the show back to show us what happened with there. But they I don't think they actually did because they wanted like a an air of mystery for at least a moment longer, right? You had to go to commercial break. The ratings were out of control. People were calling to complain. What the hell's happening? Right. So it goes off. It really goes off the rails there. Cause then it's the little possessed girl's head explodes and then <laughs> lightning is shooting out and people are burning and electrocuted and all sorts of shit. So all I can tell you is this girl is so good. She is, it, it's kind of like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. The minute you see him, you know, oh shit. The minute you see this little Manson girl bebopping out with her weird, the bad seed politeness, you you know. The minute she calls adults by their first name. Yes. That's a, that's <laughs> offensive. That's it offensive is, to me. It's even, an assault. Even my students are like, hi, Kevin. And they look at me and I'm like... I don't know what you're talking about. I don't answer to that name. <laughs> well, they all they all try the whammy. They do. F. F for you. My civics teacher was name was Roxanne. And I don't know, but there was this little ditty by the police that was about about the same time that I is had true. her class. So there was a lot of Roxanne, you don't have to put out your red light. <laughs> Walk the street for my name. Is Sting with us right now? <laughs> years of karaoke well the good thing about that song roxanne of course it deals with a prostitute 
So that's... That's nothing like calling your civic teacher a prostitute. A hua. A dirty a hua. hua. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Any other highlights you'd like to talk about from Crazy Late Night with the Devil? Dude, all I can tell you, because I took no notes, because I, I have was like, like one in. Note. Yeah. There, there was like nothing to really complain about. That is uh, true. It was fun. Yes. And uh, the end was so bizarre. I was yes. like, what the hell? And you don't really know what's real at no, the end. You don't. Was it all hi- hypnosis? Was, was it, it all, all a hypnosis? Trick? Yes. Was it all a hallucination? Yep. What the hell? But I was just happy that little girl be dead. That's all. Absolutely. Was she? I guess because it, it cuts back to he stabbed her. Right. She's got a knife he's, in her stomach. He's hallucinating that, that his wife has begged him to kill her as she's dying from cancer. Right. And as he puts the knife in, which to me seems like it's going to be hard to explain. You think? Um, he wakes up and he's killed the girl. But everybody else is still dead, right? It wasn't, yeah. like, it wasn't like they were standing there shocked and in horror. That would have been an interesting ending. If they cut to that and everybody's standing there going, oh my God. Oh. So, yeah, you're five minutes into the show or something. <laughs> <laughs> See? Interesting. Interesting. No, no, it was it was kind of an interesting kind of cozy. I keep saying cozy. It was an interesting cozy snapshot of that time period. I right? agree. The fashion. I agree. You said it, the colors, the weird oranges, you know. When, when, it had uh, the flavor. It has the vibe. It had the way people talked. It had right. the way people, the girl. Everybody slightly looks like somebody who is a thing in the seventies. Absolutely. The handler for the girl looked like one of Charlie's Angels or something. She did. Yeah. She's totally dressed in the appropriate satiny, cute little blousey thing. And, and yeah. Pan. Oh yeah. It was perfect. <laughs> she was Jacqueline Smith. She was, no, because no, she was blonde. She, she was the other one. Was she blonde? I thought she had brown hair. Am I crazy? Jacqueline Maybe Smith I, had dark hair. She had brown. Well, wasn't she, Farrah Fawcett. She was wasn't it Sh- Kate Cheryl Kate. Ladd? Is that what you're Cheryl saying? Cheryl Ladd. She was kind of doing a Cheryl Ladd, I think. Who's Who could say? Who could say? But she was wearing thing? Jacqueline Smith for Target. Or was it Kmart? <laughs> she, yes. She, it, it, was, it was if Cheryl Ladd put on Kate Jackson's clothes. Is what you're saying? No, it was, Jacqueline Smith's clothes. Well, no, Jacqueline Smith on the show was a little sassier. Oh, okay. But you're right at the t- at the Kmart collection, it is definitely the the Jacqueline Smith. No question. You know, I named our cat Katie after Kate Jackson because she was the smart one. I thought Sabrina the were dumb. Sabrina was the smart one. So our no cat question. was named after her. Absolutely. <laughs> I read somewhere that on Charlie's Angels, it was going to be like a Kate Jackson vehicle, like initially. And then they brought oh, in Kate. Jacqueline Smith and Farrah they brought Fawcett. brought Farrah Fawcett. And that, that was, was it. it. That was it. And then it became an ensemble and she was pissed. That's why she, I think she, they eventually replaced her because she was bitching because of all that stuff. Well, well it was also because. It just became a r- rotating blondes. It was, it, well, this is what happened. It was it was Kate Jackson, Jacqueline Smith, and Farrah Fawcett. Farrah wow. was on it for one year. Can you even believe that? Because all you think about of, of that show is her. She bounced, and they replaced her with Cheryl Ladd, who was there. Basically, Jacqueline Smith was there from beginning to, to end. She was yeah. there the entire time. You know, her, her bread was getting buttered. 100%. And then I think Cheryl Ladd stayed from when she joined to the end. But when um, Kay Jackson left, then they replaced her with, oh, God damn it. Now her name just jumped out of my brain. Whatever. Somebody. And she was only on it for one year because nobody liked her. It was another blonde. It was another blonde. Uh, Hatch. Shelly Hack. Shelly Hack. Shelly Hack. Nobody liked Shelly. Nobody Hack. liked her, so they got rid of her, <laughs> and they replaced her with the final season of Charlie's Angels with uh, Tanya Roberts, who was the R. only R. one who wasn't. Uh, is she dead? Oh, poor Tanya Roberts. Know. Could be her career anyway. I, I think I'm thinking of Tawny Katane. Tawny Katane never Charlie's Angel, although she was in a White Snake video. I think two White Snake videos, and the movie Witchboard, which is a horror flick. So there you go. 
Good times. <laughs> it all circles. It back. all circles back. Any last thoughts on Late Night with the Devil? No, nope, I'm going to say check it out, kids. Check it out. Let's go behind the scenes, shall Good, we? Good, because we're only 34 minutes. I know. We got, we got, no matter how we're much Charlie's scratching. Angel time we talk about. <laughs> Uh, the Carmichael character is very clearly based, including physically, on the real life James Randi. Like you said, Randi mm -hmm. was a talented mag magician who became a famous psychic debunker and started an institute that offered a large reward to anyone who could reproduce their supposed paranormal powers. He debunked Yuri Geller. That was his big thing. Yeah. Yuri G G could bend all the spoons and stuff. Yes. Mine. Well, that's what's so ridiculous. Be, look, you're a magician, whatever, illusionist, whatever the case may be. It's a trick. Accept that, acknowledge that it's a trick and we're doing this for entertainment. It doesn't have to be, I was struck by lightning and possessed by the ghost of a, you know you what I mean? You that check for a million dollars if you can prove psychic ability. Yep. So over decades, nobody was able to win the money. No. Uh, he was always angry. Yes. <laughs> The name of the mysterious men-only club situated in the California Red Road, Redwoods was The Grove. It right. was inspired by the real-life Bohemian Grove, located at 2601 Bohemian Avenue in Monte Rio, California. The Bohemian oh, Grove's... Monte Rio? I don't know. We have to look it up. But Bohemian Grove's membership boasts several politicians, including three presidents of the United States, industrialists, and other noted figures. One of the real Grove's founders was Ambrose Bierce, author of several horror stories and the cynical Devil's Dictionary. So the Devil's know. Dictionary. The Grove's rituals, which have been described as falling between occult and kitsch, include frequent images of owls. So there you go. What do you think about All that? All right. So it looks like it is north of Santa Rosa. Uh, cult leader Zandor Dabo appears to be based on the Church of Satan founder Anton Sandor LaVey. Uh huh. Sorry. Absolutely. That we saw it, of course, the Devil's Raid. <laughs> 100%. Traditional. <laughs> Except wearing a crazy helmet. No helmet here. No helmet. Unnecessary. Traditional folklore states that if a person makes contact with the devil for earthly goods, the devil comes to claim his payment in seven years. The documentary footage at the start of the film shows Delroy at the Grove in 1969. His wife dies in 1976, seven years later. 100%. As soon as I saw his wife I was, and he was in a secret society, I'm like, it is Rosemary's effing baby. 100%. Famed horror novelist Stephen King has praised the movie. He said, I got a screener. It's absolutely brilliant. I couldn't take my eyes off it. Your results may vary, as they say, but I urge you to watch it when you can. So Agreedo. Agreedo. Uh, though said it's a fresh idea. It's a fresh idea. Oh, absolutely. I like, give me something new. Uh, Don't those... take a science fiction movie and then just <laughs> add everything from every other science fiction and call it Event Horizon. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, though set in New York City, the film was shot at the Dockland Studios in Melbourne, Australia. Coincidence? Because that's where we shoot everything now, apparently. They got more money, so it, can't, it, it doesn't need to be Croatia. It does not. Uh, Bulgaria. Can't afford Canada, so let's get on board a really long flight to Australia. The movie made $666,666 on Sunday, March 24th, 2024 at the box shit. office, according to the distributor. I don't believe that for one minute. And quite frankly, not a lot of money. <laughs> in all li well, I mean, this is one day. In all likelihood, it wasn't a coincidence as box office figures can't be manipulated by around 5% by the distributor to compensate for receipts not being tracked by Rentrack. So there you go. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> when dr june ross mitchell is trying to exercise the demon abraxas out of lily she orders vade retro satana it is a quote from latin used in exorcism meaning retro means turn back or something get from satan? behind me satan not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Jesus, I'm, take I'm the wheel. I'm very concerned. There was this popular jewelry store where I went to college called Abraxas. Now I assume 
every pair of earring I bought went right to Satan's pocket. Oh, 100%. 100%. Guarantee. 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 Um, I think that's about it. Let's talk about the cast and crew, shall we? Let's do it. We just saw... The funny thing about watching this is we were just watching whatever, the 100 greatest horror, the yes. 50 greatest horror, whatever the hell you were throwing on. We watched it for 26 hours. And, and the guy that starred in this, they kept coming back. They did. This, and that's this is from a couple of years ago. So there's, he he's looks just, exactly the same. So maybe he's got same. a portrait of Dorian Gray tucked away. <laughs> they can't all have a portrait of Dorian Gray. <laughs> They, everybody's sake. got a closet where you hide shit you don't want other people to see. It's and, possible. Anything's possible. Directed and written by Cameron and Colin Cairns. Oh, that's too much. They are known for Late Night with the Devil, A Hundred Bloody Acres, Scare Campaign, Celestial Avenue. The list goes on and on. Are they Australian? I believe they are. Wah, wah. All uh, that stuff sounded just terrible. Let's see. David Dastmalchian, I'm sure I'm butchering his name, I apologize, played Jack Delroy. You know him from such things as Oppenheimer, playing William I Borden. Never saw it. He was Peter DeVries in Dune in 2021. I guess I saw that one. I never saw the second one. I did I see figured, the second what's one. the point? <laughs> He was the polka dot man in the Suicide Squad in 2021. Never saw that. And of course, Late Night with the Devil 2023. So not so much, huh? Well, there's He's more. Fresh and just, new? I just picked the, <laughs> the first four things. You want me to go? He was in The Last Voyage of the Demeter. He was in The Boogeyman. Oh, I have that recorded on my DVR. It's one of my thousands of movies. He was in Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Oh, he was in you the. You know, I was never going to see that show. The, so a lot of superhero films. A, a weird, the Al Yankovic story. He a, was oh, in, I heard good things about that, actually. He's been in a ton of stuff. Jan Sal and Bob Reboot. He's been acting for a thousand years. I just picked the first couple of things. All right. There you go. Um, Let's see. Anybody else you want to know from the cast? Uh, Laura What Gordon. about the Susan Atkins? Oh, the little girl, Lily, Lily, was played by Ingrid Torelli. What was she in? First you of know. all, her name's Ingrid, so you know there's already a problem. You know her from Late Night with the Devil. She was in 10 episodes of Five Bedrooms. She was Margot in Force of Nature, The Dry 2. And she was in six episodes of Bloom. I'm sure these are She's all Australian She's clearly shows. Australian also. 100%. Uh, Laura Gordon played June Ross Mitchell, the child psychiatrist, whatever she was. Uh, you know her from Saw 5 in oh, 2008, Jesus. Late Night with the Devil, Undertow in 2018, and she was in five episodes of 20-something. Oh, my God. 20-something. Not 30-something. Oh. 20-something. No, oh. I'm like, how old is she? Uh, well, I like the fact that she's a psychologist, so immediately she assumes she's possessed. Oh, 100%. You got to. Uh, I mean, in the end, she did seem to have some powers. It would seem, it would seem to suggest so, right? <laughs> no question. Uh, let me see. Uh, and Reese, was she and the host uh, getting, getting it on? They something? did, yes. They kind of suggested that. They had a thing going on. They got Come a on. thing Hypnotize going her on. And bring her, bring Satan to my theater. Yay! Yeah, she had her her you know second thoughts about doing that. So I understand. Reese Oteri played Gus McConnell. He was like his Ed McMahon, his Andy, uh, Andy. What the hell's his name on uh, Conan O'Brien? Uh, Andy, Andy, Richter. Andy Richter. Not Andy Dick. Not I'm Andy. Not Stoker. Andy Dick. Uh, he's only been in two things. He was in Late Night for the Devil, Late Night with the Devil, and he was in a short, A Good Deed, in 2018. Unfamiliar. Who played the Amazing Randy? Uh, who was the Amazing Randy? His name on the show was what? I don't remember. Was it Carmichael Haig? Is that Maybe. him? Car Ian Bliss played Carmichael Haig. Ian Bliss. Yeah, that's him. That's him. 
He was in The Matrix Reloaded. He was in The Matrix Revolutions. He was in Stealth in 2005. Unfamiliar. He was in Superman Returns in 2006. So he's actually done quite a few things that you, well, normal people would have seen. (laughs) He (laughs) He was in Olivia Newton John, Hopelessly Devoted to You, TV miniseries. Playing one episode as uncredited. Well, that's not great. (laughs) Anywho, Uh, anybody else? I love Olivia Newton John, but uh, I'm not sure who was playing uncredited. Do you want to know anybody else from the cast? Is there anybody else? (laughs) Uh, The guy dresses a skeleton. How about the the young couple who had a dead brother? Maybe. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm just kidding. Well, uh, Faisal Bazi played Chris Du. The medium, you know him from such things as Shantaram, 12 episodes. He was in uh, Late Night with the Devil, six episodes of Stateless. And he was in the Peter Rabbit movie playing Mr. Todd, just a voice. So do we assume that A twenty? this is an A24 production and all the films must come from Australia? Is it an A24 production? I don't know if it is or not, frankly. I don't know. Could be. It smells like it, unless they only make films in Australia now. It's entirely possible. Let's go look at the rating, shall we? Late Night with the Devil. Currently, on Rotten Tomatoes, 97%. Boom. Certified fresh. You know what the audience gave it? What? We were supposed to guess. It is 100%. 81%. I was just going to drop it down to the 80s. 81%. (laughs) Well, then you're right. Amazing. I was right again. I'm the amazing Randy. (laughs) You are. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Amy Nicholson from the Los Angeles Times says, this is a pressure cooker film, an exercise in small budget simplicity that leans on one set and one goal. Keep them watching. Boom. Uh, let's see. Megan Navarro from Bloody D- Disgusting says, The ingenuity, the painstaking period recreation, a riveting performance by Das Malchian, and a showstopper of a finale make for one Halloween event you won't want to miss. Oh, yeah. This would be super fun for ha- to watch on Halloween. Question. Matt Zoller Seitz from RogerEbert.com says, the movie gets in its own way and trips over itself repeatedly. What? Four. Who can say? What is what your did he give it? He gave it a one out of four? Two out of four. Two out of four. What do you give it, though? This is a hard one because it was really good. It was, it was uh, fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that Abigail movie, it... it, it I don't really have to think about it that much. Mm -hmm. It didn't make that big of an impact on my life. I'd like it more than Abigail. (laughs) But this is a hard one because it's good, Mm -hmm. but it's not a five. Absolutely not. I'm not sure how close to a four it is. That's the question, right? That's the question. It's what what degree between three and four? It's not one hundred percent of. It's no Baba Duke, no. You know what I mean? But it's really good, so it should have have some some props for that. Plus the whole original idea mm-hmm. and the commitment to the vibe. I mean, I am going to give it three point eight five. Uh, people vomiting on the amazing Randy out of four. They did take his uh, jacket to be dry cleaned, so that was good of them. <laughs> no, no, I'm, so I'm now r- they realize they don't have to pay for it now. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> they do not, absolutely not. They don't even have to pick it up, right? Just keep Insurance that one. Will cover that. <laughs> um, no, I, I enjoyed this movie. But it was it wasn't like when it was over, I stood up and applauded. I was just kind of like, "Oh, okay, that was that was entertaining. I mean, it was entertaining. It was entertaining, but it's by no means like, oh shit, everybody drop what you're doing. Rush out and see late night with the devil. 
So it is that kind of thing. And I've said it before. If you get to a four on my scale, that means you're in the rotation. You're right. in the rotation. It's big. I mean, I might, I'll might. i watch this again. For sure, I'll watch this again. This would be perfect for Halloween as the trick-or-treaters come by. Well, I, will, yes. I will see it again. Um, but yeah, it's it's not a classic, but it's very good. It's it's a very good, but that's the the issue. Is it's like in my mind, four is good, five is great, right? right? And I don't know if it's, but see, if you're under four, now you're in the threes, and three know, always seems mediocre. One. So it, it's hard. It's hard one. So I'm it's I'm almost gonna, a four. How about we'll just say it's almost a four. I mean, and it's kind of like for me, it means, am I going to buy this? Am I going to buy it and add it to my collection? And the answer is no. I'm not, not going to buy it. Goddamn That's, I, I, didn't, I didn't even buy Rosemary's Baby, which is my favorite. But it's been on my DVR for 10 years with the key. Well, that's because you don't have to buy it because it's just <laughs> trapped in your rotation. You're a true media purchaser. If you're like, this movie will always be on Disney Plus, but I'm buying it anyway. <laughs> I gotta have, it's gotta, it's gotta be May. Um, so well, I'm going to discuss that you cannot, you buy all this digital media that floats in the atmosphere. And then when you die, it's gone. We've talked about it once. I don't think that's how it works. I just tell people know my password. It just continues on. Somebody else just keeps using my stuff. I don't know because I thought I saw something on the news that you, the, the password does not go on. I mean, that's what, what? they want to say. So what, wait a minute. This, this makes absolutely no. It, 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 if it still exists and there's still a but password. Even if you don't exist. Correct. It's not like, like well, we read the obituaries, uh, you know, <laughs> by, by chosen heir. You know, so therefore, you know, voodoo now called Fandango at home. Sorry. So now you just forfeit all that stuff. That's not how it works. I'm telling you. You're it's out of scam. Your it's a scam a ding dong. So I'm going to say 3.75 out, out of five. Um, no, less than mine. Less than you. Five. Less than you. Five. Um, I don't know. I, I was intrigued at best. Um, I don't think I was ever scared. And like no, I said. The, it's the, scary, but I was not scared. It was, I, again, to me, it was more interesting than scary. And yeah. even the, the kind of gross out moment, I already knew about. So I don't know if that's bad or good. Um, I did not. Thank you, though. Were, were you appalled and shocked when his eyeball pops out and a giant worm crawls out? No. When you're dealing with the devil, it gets messy. It, it gets messy. 100%. Dude, it can't be worse than somebody vomiting pea soup and then masturbating with a crucifix. It can't be worse than that. It can never be worse than that. So worms or crucifix in your hoo-ha. Right. Worms any day, right? <laughs> well, and, and honestly, the, the real worms coming out of his neck and his stomach were probably grosser. Like when the eyeball pops out, you're like, Ew! but then you see it's kind of a fake looking big old worm kind of there that that didn't do it for me on second view so i would say watch it i would definitely say watch it um but i, I would say temper your expectations it's not a world beater it's fun it's fun it's entertaining but to me it's not it's not like an oh shit damn it's not a damn check that movie out yeah so any last thoughts on late it was night not with the devil? bodies or malignant Clearly not. Clearly not. So what, any last thoughts on this, Aaron, before we move on? No. Enjoyed. That's that. That's that. So thank you very much. Go to our page on Facebook. We're on X. We're on Blue Sky. We're on Threads. We're on Instagram. TikTok. You may be watching this on YouTube. Uh, you can email us, the podcast that wouldn't die at Gmail. Gmail. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available. So don't forget to like, share, rate, and review. Won't you? Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Aaron, what is your social media situation? I think I'm still on Artsy and First Dibs. Otherwise, I'm on the gram, the cult of Aaron. Join the cult. Indeedly, deedly do. As you know, we like to include feedback viewer listener comments from across social media let's take a look shall we 
Let's do it. Uh, let's see. Talking about Deadly Friend. We have multiple responses here. Uh, let's see if I can read them. CJ Pony Boy says, I remember as a kid, me and my friends were winding the VHS at this scene and laughing our butts off. Comedy gold. This is, of course, referring to the scene where young uh, pre-MAGA Christy Swanson throws a basketball and blows up Ann Ramsey mama, the titular mama in Throw Mama from the Train, and her head explodes. That was a little shocking. I was not anticipating that. Shocking. No question. Bill716 says, she's got one hell of an arm on her. No question. Indeedly do. WNBA, here we go. Absolutely. Next week, we're going back to crazy, ridiculous horror. We're to Aaron doesn't even know what we're doing. We are doing what? the horror classic Death Spa. Death Spa. It's an 80s. That's not a real thing. <laughs> it's a real movie. It is about a haunted health spa, as gyms were called in the late 80s. You can watch. <laughs> is it possessed? Is it haunted? Who can say? You can watch it on AMC Plus, Voodoo with ads, Tubi with ads, or Shudder, Plex for free. So it's all over the place. So send in your favorite scenes, favorite quotes, comments, and questions, and we may, just may, talk about it on the show. So thank you very much, and be well! Good day.